the falsification of our history. How they transplanted the old world history onto the new world map. Let's go back to the moment where it all started. In 800 AD, a big tsunami is hitting crater earth and is flooding the whole crater. People of crater earth are fleeing to higher ground, taking their possessions and main artifacts of their culture. In northern Europe, parts of the refugees or Vikings are setting foot ashore. Here I will resume my story where I ended it in a previous video and I will tell the story the way I think it all happened. Main line in the story is that you have two histories. Everything that happened before 800 AD is happening on Crater Earth. Everything after is happening on the new world map. So let's take the map of Europe and erase all known names. To begin, I will take myself as an example because I live in the area where I think the refugees first landed. So I live in Belgium, Belgica, in the region of Flanders, Flandria. Born in the city of Ghent, the old name is Ghanda. Belgica. Belgium was founded in 1830 and was named after a quote of Julius Caesar in De Bello Gallico, where he claimed the Belgae were the bravest fighters of them all. Our area coincided with the area historians think was once Belgica. So the story of Julius Caesar happens before 800 AD. Therefore, we have to look at the map of Crater Earth. So, the real Belgica has nothing to do with the current Belgium. Flandria. The history of Flanders is a medieval one happening after 800 AD. Symbol of Flanders is the lion, the lion of Judah, the Ari. Suddenly, in the swamps of Flanders, a very high standard culture is erupting. The Flemish primitive painters, Flemish polyphony, old Flemish tales, Gothic cathedrals are popping up out of nowhere. This knowledge was imported by the refugees. In my view, they also imported Christianity. Why is this area called Flanders? Let's look at the crater map. There you see Flandria. Maybe it reminded them of the Flandria of Crater Earth. Ganda. Ghent was a fortification of the Scythians, plundered by the Vikings around 870 and used as a base to plunder the rest of the territory. Here you see the castle built by the Vikings. So this city around the fortification was captured and renamed Ganda after a city on Crater Earth. Let's recapitulate. You have two main forces. You have the invading white race, the Christians. With the lion symbol, the Ari, the phoenix of the resurrected Christ, and their language is Rum, Hebrew, Yiddish. Next, you have the Saracens, Moors, 
Mayans, Mazarians, Etruscs, all those people can be brought back to one root people, the Scythians or the Turanians. Some Turkish viewers threw my attention to Polat Kaya, a Turkish investigator. He came to the conclusion that every known culture and language has an origin in the Turkish language. The Iranians were believers of the sky god, sun god and the moon god. For that they were labeled as pagans and persecuted by the Aryans, Christians and the Semites. So the Scythians were brown-skinned, they were nature worshippers, the pagans and they worshipped the sun eye and the moon eye. Let's concentrate now on the center point of the falsification, namely the Crusades and Jerusalem. To understand the Crusades, we have to go back to the Roman Empire and the conquest of the whole crater. The only people they could not conquer were the German tribes. Later in time, the German tribes attacked the Roman Empire and it collapsed. The only part they could not conquer was the part on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea and that became the East Roman Empire. Capital was Byzantium. 500 years later, the Eastern Roman Empire had become Muslim and the Western Roman Empire had become Christian. So now the Christians decide they have to liberate Jerusalem, the land of their Savior, Jesus Christ. The first thing they do is attack Constantinople that is still under the influence of Byzantium. And here you can clearly see that Byzantium and Constantinople are two different cities. Here you see the location on an old miniature. Here another one flipped vertically. Here you see a battle taking place and you see that Constantinople is completely fortified in a gothic style and in the city you see a lot of big churches. And what do you think of this one? Fire weapons? So what are the history books telling us about Constantinople? Well, they try to tell us that the original name was Byzantium 
in 330 the name was changed into Constantinople and in 1453 the name was changed into Istanbul. Sure, so that would be the same like saying Brussels used to be called Madrid and then 200 years later they changed their name into Paris and now they call Brussels again. Sure. So this is our first piece of evidence of the falsification of history. Constantinople. So what happened to Constantinople and Byzantium? Well, both were flooded and Istanbul was the victim and got the two names. From there, the crusaders decide to attack by land and they make a circular movement. There they attack the city Antiochia. Here you see a picture of the crater map and you see that Antiochia is a very big castle. Next to it is a big mountain. Here is a medieval painting of it. You see the mountain in the background. Here you see another one. You see the mountain in the background, the fortified castle. And if you look carefully, in the front you see the crusaders have cannons. Strange, I didn't know the crusaders had cannons. And of course Antiochia is situated in Turkey and this is Antiochia. Where are the walls? Is that all that is left from this gigantic city? So, when they have taken the castle of Antiochia, it's very easy to attack Jerusalem. In case you think, well, why don't they attack from the water? The whole coastline is fortified by cities. You have Tripoli, Beirut, Acres, Tyre, Jaffa, Ascalon. For people who know the history of the Crusades, these names will sound familiar. Later in the Crusades, they will attack Egypt and they attack Cairo through the Nile. And now, of course, the most important piece of the Crusades, Jerusalem. Well, we have the same old story again. So Jerusalem is a fortified city, Gothic style, and in the center you have the Temple of Solomon. In many of the cases the Temple of Solomon is an octagonal temple. Thirteen fifty six The Travels of John Mandeville. For if a man were to go from Scotland or England to Jerusalem, he would be going upwards all the way, for our land is in the lowest part of the West. The cause is that the earth and sea is round, for it is commonplace that Jerusalem is in the middle of the earth. Let's take a look at some different explanations from Palatkaya. All seems to be referring to the position of the sun. What happened to Jerusalem? There was a flood and after that it flash froze, together with some other holy places like Mecca and Byzantium. Now the ice is melting and maybe the holy places are defrosting. 
Is that the reason why Patriarch Kirill, head of the Orthodox Church, visited Antarctica? Well, we're almost at the scene of the crime. Let's recapitulate. The Vikings, Templars, Crusades, and now 1400 to 1500, the Renaissance. The resurrection of the Phoenix. You conquer some Etruscan territory. You take their main city and you call it Rome. You take the Etruscan buildings and you call them Roman. You take their history and replace it with the crater history of Rome. Now, of course, you think this is the Roman culture. But let's take a look at some Roman emperors, how they are depicted in the Middle Ages. Julius Caesar. Titus. Caesar Augustus. Look at their heads. That is the same crown like the Pope's. Three kings are gathering at a strange building. That would be the Temple of Solomon. Three kingdoms. And one crown for him who rules them all. Now the three kings are paying tribute to their new Lord, Jesus Christ. Or was it Julius Caesar? Let's take a look at the list of popes. On Christmas Day of the year 800, Leo III is crowning Charlemagne as Holy Roman Emperor. So we have the first list, put the remaining 800 years next to it. That brings us to the year 33, the death of Jesus Christ. That made Peter the first Pope appointed by Christ. Now Leo III, as lawful descendant of Jesus Christ, can crown Charlemagne as Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Let's return to the list of the Popes. But let's put the second list on the other timeline. That brings us to the year 450. So in 476 you have the fall of the Roman Empire. That means you have 450 years of Roman Emperors. And that brings us to Julius Caesar. In the first timeline the year zero is Jesus Christ. In the other timeline, the year zero is Julius Caesar. What happened here? Let me give you an example. So you have Mao, psychopathic killer, responsible for millions of deaths. But to hide all this, you create a propaganda Mao the completely opposite of the real Mao. Now let's presume you want to make two different people out of this Mao. What would you do? 
You take the propaganda Mao and you call him Lao. You take the real Mao but you give him a different face. Now you have Mao and Lao. So let's turn this equation. You have Julius Caesar with the wrong face. And you have Jesus Christ with the wrong name. I already showed you that in the Middle Ages Julius Caesar was depicted with a beard. So I think there might be some evidence in the Shroud of Turin. Some people have made a 3D replica. Let's take a look at the body wounds. For every body wound of Caesar, they have found a Christian explanation. There goes the Spear of Destiny. So Julius Caesar is not the short-haired grey old man but a long-haired, bearded young man. Something like this. Except for the nose, maybe. Julius Caesar had an arced nose with a tip curved downwards at the end.